Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Philippine. Welcome back to the Minnesotan Sports Podcast. And it is finally here. The NFL season officially starts tomorrow at 7.20 Central Standard Time. The Ravens and the Chiefs kicking it off on Thursday Night Football. Don't forget that I am going to be live streaming from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock Central Time. I'm going to be talking about the excitement surrounding the start of the season. I'm going to be answering all kinds of questions you guys have in the comments. And it's just going to be a really fun time. So make sure you tune into that. It's going to be right here on YouTube, again, from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, right before the kickoff to start off the season. And I just can't wait. Now, usually I would have all kinds of videos out before the season starts. I had them all ready to go. I had QB rankings, wide receiver rankings, top offenses, top defenses, that kind of thing. Teams with the most approved, all that stuff. But this, it just was ambushed for me with two of the busiest weeks of my entire life, honestly. And so I wasn't able to make very many videos. But this is the most important one, and I'm happy I'm able to make this one for you. So I'm just going to be going through all the different divisions. I'll be ranking them from top to bottom. I'll be naming my champions of each division and then ranking them. And then at the end of each conference, I'll go through one through seven and kind of fill out what I think will be the playoff picture by the end of the season. So we'll start things off here with the AFC and we'll start it off with the AFC North. Now, this is starting it off with a banger because this is going to be probably the most difficult division to, well, actually, this is probably the second hardest division to pick. We've got three teams that are right there in the mix, and then we have the Steelers. That is going to be a spoiler for you. I have the Steelers being number four in the division. I think that they have a good quarterback battle going right now with Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. It's going to be interesting to see who ends up getting that job. It looks like it's going to most likely be Russell Wilson, but we're going to have to see there. But yeah, that Steelers defense is really good. I just think on the offensive side, there's going to be so many issues, so many problems that they had last year. I think that this quarterback battle is going to kind of be a lot more of the same. And so they weren't able to overcome it last year. I don't think they will this year either. Realistically, I could easily see them in a third or even second spot in worst divisions. But in this division, I definitely think they are the worst team. At number three in the division, I do have the Browns. Um, again, just a testament to how good this division ha is going to be this year and has been in the past. The defense is no joke. Uh, Miles Garrett is still one of the best defensive rushers in the entire league, um, but their concerns with quarterback, you know, Deshaun Watson has not played more than half the season so far since he's been there in Cleveland. Um, even when he has played, he has not looked good. And yes, he's been playing with injury, but I don't know if he's going to be playing fully without injury the rest of his career. And it, there's just so many questions there. And the defense for them is really only slightly better than the Steelers. And so for that reason, I don't think I can put them ahead of either of these two juggernauts in the AFC North. So they sit there at the number three spot. Now here comes the biggest struggle because you've got the Ravens and the Bengals. The Bengals had a bad year last year. And yes, there were kind of some media blown up things about Joe Burrow, but really the only thing that really plagued them last year, they kind of struggled out of the gate, but what really got them was that injury to Joe Burrow. And I still think they would have been able to salvage the rest of that season and make the playoffs had they been able to get Joe Burrow back. They had one rough year that was really largely due to an injury. And all of a sudden people are kind of writing them off and being like, okay, this division just belongs to the Ra Ravens for the near future. Did we just forget that the Bengals have been in the playoffs ever since Joe Burrow had his second year with them and they have made it to the AFC Championship twice? They've already made it to a Super Bowl once with Joe Burrow at the helm. Yes, there are a lot of contract disputes uh, with different players on that offense. Yes, Joe Mixon is gone but they still have one of the better wide receiver cores in the entire NFL and Joe Burrow being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL still, you know, he had one year where he fell off because of an injury and all of a sudden people aren't acting like he's top five. And I do still see him as a top three quarterback in this league. That being said, I do think the Bengals are going to be second this year by a very slim margin. I just feel like the Ravens are going to continue their winning ways 
Obviously, it does all come down to the injury issues with Lamar Jackson. But we ha- we did see proof last year that he is able to play a full season. And as long as we know that that's a good possibility that he, he can find a way to do that, I feel like we have to, pit- to put um, the Ravens at number one this year. I mean, see what they did last year. It seemed like they finally got the balance between the run and the pass game all figured out. Now you add on King Henry to what was already a stacked run pass option type situation. Not only does he improve on the, the team on the ground, but now it makes it even more impossible for a team to stop the Ravens because we have Lamar Jackson that could take off and run, but we also have one of the best running backs in the league. How do you defend against the pass when you're going to be trying so hard to anticipate that run? It's just such a hard thing to stop. I think they're going to be one of the best offenses this year, and their defense is nothing to sneeze at either. Unless an injury or two happens, I don't see the Ravens losing this division. So I have them as the division champions, and we will throw the Bengals and the Browns into the potential playoffs pool, so to speak, and we'll rank them in the 1-7 through later on in the video. Going now to the AFC South, this is a division where... You've got one team that's firmly in first, in my opinion. You've got one team that is a interesting up-and-comer. And you've got two teams that I don't think are going to do much this year. The Titans I have at number four. I don't think that is much of a surprise. You know, I'm interested to see how Will Levis plays this year. But I don't think it is going to be all that inspiring. The Titans kind of, you know, stripped up the entire team the last couple years. And they are fully in the rebuild process. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, and the Titans will have another very rough year this year. The Jags could surprise people, um, but I do think that Trevor Lawrence is going to need to have a big year this year to prove to people that he isn't just a middle-of-the-road quarterback. So far, he has shown the DNA of a quarterback that is going to do enough to keep himself relevant, but has not done anything to that elite level yet in his career. I certainly do think he has an opportunity to, but also I don't think he has a good enough team around him that is going to vault this team into any kind of playoff contention this year. And so I have them firmly in that number three spot. The Colts I have at number two, this is a very interesting team because they have a lot of balance all around them, not to mention the fact that Anthony Richardson is kind of starting to turn heads already In after his first year was halted due to an injury. People are talking about the physicality of him, how you can, he can be an absolute freak on the offensive side of the ball. And we do have to see him stay healthy. We also need to see him play because, yes, there's a lot of quarterbacks that have come into the league as physical specimens, but they honestly haven't worked out all that often. And so we need to still see that. But the potential of Anthony Richardson, not to mention the, the you know, sneaky solid team that he kind of has around him right now, is enough for me to put the Colts at the number two spot. Number one, far and away, I think, are the Texans. They will be one of the best teams in the AFC this year, without a doubt. C.J. Stroud came in in his rookie season. Yes, sometimes you can have sophomore slumps, but the poise that he had in the pocket, it wasn't just raw talent and athleticism that we saw with his rookie season. It was also, he he already showed so much maturity in the pocket, so much team leadership and all the qualities that I think mold a player to be consistently good from a very young age in the NFL. You throw on the fact that Tank Dell and Nico Collins will now be healthy this year, and then you throw in one of the best wide receivers still in the game in Stefan Diggs. Yes, he can be problematic, but you have an amazing quarterback in C.J. Stroud. It's a new, fresh opportunity for him in a new offense. It's going to be a pass-heavy offense. I think Stefan Diggs will still thrive. Yes, you're going to have to convince him to take you know, a target share that he might not be happy with. He might throw a few tantrums, but he's still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and you cannot dispute that. And so you throw in the fact that the Texans still do have a very solid defense this year. I think they're going to be, they're going to absolutely run the AFC South, and I think they'll be one of the best teams in the league this year. Now moving on to the AFC East, which is, in my opinion, the hardest division to predict in the entire NFL this year. Patriots are four, and that is no, you know, debate about that. 
the, they have Drake May, but it's going to be a slow process, and they know that. They're, con they're, con they're, uh, they're perfectly fine with having one rough year with him and then having another high draft pick, being able to continue to rebuild that team. It's going to be a slow-moving process for Drake May and the Patriots. They have potential, but not this year. And then it's a three-way horse race, in my opinion. I don't think there's a single video I could watch of someone making a case for one of these three teams where I'd be like, no, you're wrong. I would see every single one of these teams potentially ending up as the AFC East champion this year. There are multiple pros and a, a few big cons for each of these three teams. For the Buffalo Bills, the champions last year, they still have Josh Allen, one of the best physical specimens in the entire NFL, but you're taking away a lot of his weapons. And the defense still is pretty good for the Bills, but you're setting up a situation where Josh Allen might have to take even more risks than he did in previous years. And that is a little bit concerning. And that's one of the reasons why I can't far and away say that the Bills are going to win the division again this year. Then you have the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers, who still does have some juice left in him, after having a rough injury to start out the season last year, you're putting a quarterback that has been in really good regular season winning situations in his entire career. He knows how to win in the regular season. And you're putting him with one of the best defenses in the entire league. I mean, the last couple of years, the Jets have had horrible quarterbacks in their quarterback room and have still found ways to get close to the playoffs I mean, to be, even, to be able to even smell the playoffs with the kind of quarterbacks they've played with the last couple of years is just unbelievable. And so to have Aaron Rodgers in there at the helm, who again is just such a great quarterback in the regular season, is huge for the Jets. And I think that they are definitely a contender for the AFC's championship. Then you throw in the Dolphins, and they have, in my opinion, the best wide receiver core in the entire NFL right now. But you have Tua Tagovailoa, who has had some really shaky, you know, bouts of the season last year, where he's been incredibly inconsistent. Not to mention the fact that last year, this Dolphins offense ended up being really, really predictable. And once teams figured that out, they had a really bad ending to the season, and they ended up getting knocked out in the very first round. Can the Dolphins find a way to redesign their offense where they're not going to be found out? And can Tua Tonga-Vailoa find a way to still win games and still be successful when things don't go exactly the way they are planned? Because he was absolutely horrible in situations where he had to venture out of that comfort zone last year. So those are kind of the pros and cons of each of these teams. I right now have the Dolphins at number three because I do have a feeling that they're going to have a really tough time getting out of that bubble and out of that predictability, and Tua is going to continue to struggle when he has to venture outside of that comfort zone. And I think that's going to lead to this offense really struggling this year and, and struggling to an unprecedented degree considering how many offensive weapons they have. The defense is still good, but I don't quite think they're going to get up to a level where they can win this AFC East this year. At number two... I have, see, I have it written in my notes, and now I'm even second-guessing it myself. I initially was going to start off this video with the Bills winning the division, but I'm just, I'm thinking in my brain, Josh Allen looking out there and not seeing Stefan Diggs anymore, not having that lifeline, and him just chucking it into nothingness, which was such an issue for him at the beginning of last season, and they figured it out, but now they don't have one of the best wide receivers anymore in the league. I'm, you know what? I'm changing my mind. I'm going to say the Bills are going to be second in the division and that the Jets are going to end up coming on top. I just, the more I, the more I think about the Bills playing, the more concerned I get, which sucks because I am a big Bills fan. But I just, I, I hate the idea of Josh Allen having even less help in that pocket. And I think he's going to throw more interceptions this year than he has in, a, in his entire career, honestly. So let's flip that. Let's say the Jets win this division. If Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy, even if he doesn't play the way he used to play in the regular season, I still do think that he's going to be at least good enough 
that this defense can carry the, the Jets to their first AFC East championship in a very long time. Finally, we have the AFC West, which is a very interesting division, but one that I think has a very clear winner. At number four, I do have the Denver Broncos, and there's no way I can talk myself out of people calling me biased for this pick. It is true that I hate the Broncos right now. You know, any team that Sean Payton is on, I hate. You know, I I've made so many videos in the past talking about how much I hate Sean Payton. As a Vikings fan, Bounty Gate, him, you know, faking the or mocking the skull chant right before the Minneapolis miracle happened, all the stuff he said about Tua a, a year or so back, um, and all the things he said about the previous head coach of the Broncos. So maybe there is some bias involved in this. But I don't think the Bo Nix experiment is going to go as well as people think year one. I might be proven wrong in the long term. I don't think he's going to be a success at all. But I definitely don't think he's going to be a success in the very first year of his career. I mean, he is not going to have a whole lot of help. Not to mention the fact that that defense is not one of the best in the league. I don't think that the Broncos are going to do much this year. I don't think they're going to do much better than they did with Russell Wilson, that's for sure. Um, so I see them being fourth in this AFC West. Call me biased all you want. That's just my opinion. The Raiders I have in third. Kind of a toss-up, honestly, between the Raiders and Chargers in second and third. I don't see the, either of them having that great of a season. Um, but the Raiders, I think, are third because, you know, they have some good pieces lining up here. You know, they drafted a good tight end in the first round of the draft. They still have Devontae Adams, in my opinion, a top three wide receiver still in the NFL. And they got better on defense, honestly, in this offseason as well. But they still don't know who is going to step up as quarterback. You know, Gardner Minshew ended up winning the, the battle over Aiden O'Connell. And so we'll see what Uncle, Uncle Rico does for the Raiders. But I just don't have much confidence that anyone in their quarterback room is going to be able to do much. And Devontae Adams is only going to get more frustrated. You know, he, you know, you can, you can say what you want, but he did seem like really a lot of a diva in that wide receivers show. Um, and he still is one of the best wide receivers in the league. I'm not saying that that's a slight against his ability to play, but as he gets more frustrated as the season goes on, I think it's just going to continue to devolve that, that locker room and make things more and more toxic within the Raiders. I don't see them having a good season this year. Then we move on to the Chargers. And I feel like it's kind of a similar situation to a smaller degree as the Bills. I'm not saying that they'd be a division winner with better wide receivers, but I am saying they'd be a much better team. Justin Herbert, in my opinion, is still at least a top six or seven quarterback in this league. He is just teetering outside of that elite level. And what he did before he got hurt with the Chargers last year, despite all of the issues with the team, how much he was able to do to try and help this team win with how horrible the defense was, is still incredible. You know, he was never the problem last year. And now you're throwing him into a situation where he has even more help. He lost Keenan Allen and he lost Mike Williams. They just have no one for him to throw to. And I still think they're going to win six, seven, maybe even eight games without any help. But Justin Herbert needs help in order to be successful. He doesn't have it. I don't think there's anyone that's going to be able to beat the Chiefs this year. So the Chargers are at two. And then that moves us on to the Chiefs. I don't think there's much that needs to be said with this. Uh, the Chiefs are, are still far and away one of the best teams in the league. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, what can I say? They still have one of the better offensive lines in the league. Yes, they have even more you know, questions now because Hollywood Brown is going to be the number one wide receiver, and now he is hurt right now, but we'll have to see if Xavier Worthy, the speedster, steps up who is going, maybe Sky Moore even has a comeback, who knows. But what we know about Patrick Mahomes is he has the ability, just like Tom Brady did, to make really any wide receiver you know, come into his own um, during the regular season and to you know prove himself and start to shine because he has that ability as such an amazing player. So I'm not concerned about the Chiefs, even with the wide receiver stuff. We were concerned about it last year too. I just don't know what to say. We're, we're witnessing the best quarterback and most talented quarterback to ever do it. He is going to get the job done for the Chiefs. Unless he's hurt, the Chiefs will be one of the top seeds in the, in the AFC this year. 
So now we move on here. We have the playoff pool. We have the um, Bills, Dolphins, Colts, Bengals, and Browns that are going to be heading up this playoff pool. I'll start with the division winners. I'm going to rank the Chiefs in the number one spot as the winners of the AFC West. Again, not much that needs to be said there. I'm going to put the Texans at the second spot. Um, and I think it's just, man, I have such a good feeling about him this year. With C.J. Stroud, um, they their offense got even better with the addition of Stephon Diggs. I think this team is poised to make potentially a deep playoff run this year. Next, we have the Ravens. Now, I personally think the Ravens are going to be the best team in the AFC this year on paper, but I have to put them at three just because they have the far and away the toughest division in the entire league. You've got the Bengals that are going to be breathing down their necks. You've got the Browns and that defense, and you have the Steelers and that defense. I mean, it's going to be really tough to win more games and outpace the Texans and the Chiefs. It's just going to be so hard. So that's why I have to put the Ravens at three. And then at four, we have the New York Jets. You know, I just think that there's more reservations about the Jets than any of these other three teams on this list. So you have to put them at four. Now let's go with the five through seven. I think the far and away favorite for the fifth is the Bengals. I do feel really, really highly on them. Again, I think that the media is overhyping a lot of the issues that the Bengals have. Yes, Jamar Chase is in a contract dispute. I think that's only going to make him work harder this year and play even better. Um, Joe Burrow had an injury, yeah, but he's over it. And people are talking about trying to find some way to call him this huge diva just because he bleached his hair. Like, who cares? The guy can play. He's still one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So, yeah, Bengals far and away number five. At number six, I do still have the Bills. I... I I am concerned about them, but I still think Josh Allen will win enough games for this team to make them uh, a playoff team this year. And then finally, number seven, I do have the Dolphins just sneaking in. Uh, I, th I have them edging out the Colts and the Browns. You know, the Browns, like I said, that quarterback situation is so concerning. And the Colts, I don't think they're going to get there yet with Anthony Richardson. There's just so many unknowns. But there are your one through seven for the AFC standings this year. Next up, we're going to go to the NFC. We're going to start off with the NFC North, and I do have the Vikings at number four. There's just too many concerns with this team. You know, we've got Sam Darnold coming in there. I would love to see him have a resurgence at the quarterback position, very similar to Baker Mayfield's, but I just don't see it happening. You know, he, he is entering the most favorable situation he's had in his entire career, but I just don't know if I have confidence that he is going to be able to play well enough. Yes, we do have one of the best offenses surrounding him in the NFL, but if the quarterback isn't playing well, it's kind of a moot point. And then, even if our offense was better, our defense would still sell us games. I mean, our cornerback room did get better with the signing of Stephon Gilmore, but we still don't have anyone really besides him. You know, we, we have some okay options. You know, we've got Duke Shelley, um, but... I don't know if I have much confidence there. You know, our the rest of our you know, secondary is okay. And the defensive line still will be good. I'm excited to see Dallas Turner play. But I do think that it's going to be a very clear loss of Daniil Hunter this season. In the future, I think that Dallas Turner will end up being a better player than Daniil Hunter ever was for the Vikings. But this year will be a slow process for him to start to develop. And I don't really think that this line is even going to be as good as it was last year. And that interior line wasn't great either. Not to mention the fact that, I, speaking of lines, Sam Darnold is in a better situation, but he's still going to be playing behind a really bad interior offensive line. Our two spots on the edge with O'Neal and Derrissaw are covered, but other than that, we're going to be in some big trouble. So I don't see the Vikings beating out any other team in the NFC North. I do have the Bears at three. The only reason I have the Bears at three is because of how bad the Vikings are going to be this year. I recognize that. But Bears fans need to understand, I just, I don't understand the hype. Every single year, the Bears go into the season, and people, like last year and the year before, they were like, oh, Justin Field, we got a new draft pick, first round, let's see how he does, and then the Bears absolutely bomb. The year after that, Everyone's like, ooh, Justin Fields is looking even better. He, he's really launching them in practice. 
The Bears are going to be really good. The defense is looking great. Sure enough, the Bears once again can't do anything last year. I understand that Caleb Williams is a generational talent. I understand they got him more help this year. With more and with the addition of Keenan Allen, they have Roma Dunze. This is going to be the best wide receiver room we've seen in a long time with the Bears. The defense has some new pieces. I, I don't care. It's the Bears. I don't, I don't get it. I don't see it happening. The Bears, every year, find some way to mess it up. Caleb Williams, I mean, I don't want to wish ill will on the kid, but I just don't know if anything can really fix the Bears. And I'm, I need to see a full season of success from the Bears for me to ever believe that they are going to be any more than a 6-7 or seven win team. People, for some reason, just want to believe the Bears are going to be good year after year after year, and they just never are. So we need to just drop that. The Packers are at number two for me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I feel like there's a lot of bias people are going to say are coming through here. I also don't get the hype on the Packers. They are going to be the number two team, in my opinion, in the NFC North. You know, Jordan Love had one good half of the season. A and that's it. He really struggled in the first part of the season, finding accuracy. He eventually got there, and yes, he did have an impressive run with the Packers. They made it to the divisional round. And then you just forked over some of the most money a quarterback has gotten in recent history just because he had a good, like, seven or eight games to end the season. Fine. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. As a Vikings fan, I love that the Packers decided to do that. Throw all the money you possibly can. Get rid of all your cap space for this quarterback that barely has shown anything yet. That's awesome. And then just because the Packers had one good run in the playoffs, they were still the seventh seed going into that playoff run. And they got lucky because they had to play the Cowboys, which is the easiest matchup you could possibly get in a playoff game because they never do anything in the playoffs. You go against the 49ers, I will admit, they did get them on their toes, but then all it took was a fourth quarter for the 49ers to wake up and be like, oh, shoot, we're actually playing football. And then McCaffrey just ran it, and and that lead was gone. And just like that, the Packers' season was over. And now people are going into the season just like, oh, well, they Jordan Love's going to be better. This team's going to be better. They're, they made the divisional round this year, right? So let's just say they're going to win the North. And it's just like... I'm not seeing where those dots connect. They had a lucky run in the playoffs last year, and yes, they did have an impressive performance in those playoffs, but you can't just say that they're automatically this division-winning caliber team. You know, team six and seven seeds win in the playoffs all the time. That doesn't mean they're better than the teams they beat. So, sure, you can put Jordan Love on this pedestal. You can say that he's a top 10 quarterback for some ungodly reason I will never understand going into the season. I need to see more from the Packers for me to to believe that they have any shot of beating the NFC North champions, the, the Detroit Lions this year. And so I do have the Lions at number one once again. It felt like they even got better in the offseason. They added even more pieces. They still have one of the best offenses in the league. Jared Goff is an incredibly underrated quarterback. People still put him way lower than they should on the quarterback rankings because he plays for the Lions. And yes, they had some inconsistent games last season, but they still controlled things enough to win the division and then went in and played some really good games against the Rams and the Bucks. And yes, they blew a really bad lead to the 49ers. But if Dan Campbell can find some way to be a, just a little less aggressive to take his foot off that gas pedal just just enough to make better decisions in the playoffs. I think the Lions would have gone to the Super Bowl last year if Dan Campbell had made better decisions. So I think he's certainly capable of growing as a coach. I, I don't see any reason why the Lions don't win the NFC North again this year. The NFC South now is going to be also a very interesting division, but one that I think there's a clear favorite now to win the division after what happened in the offseason. At number four, I have the Panthers. I would love to see Bryce Young improve. You know, I've got a I've got a friend from college that's a big Panther fan, so all the best of luck to him watching his Panthers this season. I would love to see Bryce Young get better, and there's a good chance he might. 
It's going into his third season now. He is going to have to improve soon if the Panthers are going to see a future with him. Um, but for the time being, I mean, I have to see something from the Panthers. I mean, they they have, you know, a few additions that they made this season. That's true. But I just, I think they're still in the depths of a rebuild and they're not going to do much this season. At number three, I actually do have the Buccaneers. I don't think that the Baker Mayfield experiment is going to go as well this year as it did last year. I think he came in, people forgot the way he played, and he kind of, you know, defied expectations. He surprised a lot of people. But the Bucks really still only won the division because it was such a bad division. Um, and I don't think they're going to be nearly as good of a team as they even were last year. You know, I feel like their defense got slightly worse. And I again, I think Baker Mayfield's going to fall off this year. I think it was kind of a fluke year for him where he played well again. People like, oh, shoot, kind of forgot that he can do this and that. Um, so just kind of a, a bad feeling about the Buccaneers going into this season. The Saints, I just have a good feeling that potentially Derek Carr is going to have a resurgence. Um, I feel like it's going to be kind of a changing of the guard where Derek Carr is going to have an actually healthy season and still you know, prove why he still can be a good QB. And he's going to be the one that throws people off guard this year, and people aren't going to be expecting it, unlike Baker Mayfield. Uh, and, I mean, I still do think that this team has enough weapons. If if this team can stay healthy, which I have this sneaking suspicion they might actually put together a, a healthy season, Chris Olave is still one of the best up-and-coming wide receivers in the NFL. I have a good feeling about the Saints this year uh, to at least improve enough to be second in this kind of rough NFC South. And then, far and away, favorites, we do have the Atlanta Falcons. You know, you, you improve this team by putting on Kirk Cousins. Yes, he has struggled in the playoffs, but we're not talking about the playoffs right now. We're talking about winning the division in the regular season. He's going to get a lot of help. He's going to have probably the best offensive line he's had since, at least since he's been on the Vikings, because, again, he has not had much help with the Vikings. I think with a better offensive line, and still having some really good weapons offensively as well, people are going to see why I've been saying year after year that people are undervaluing Kirk Cousins. Now, should would the Vikings or should the Vikings have paid him as much money as the Falcons paid him? Absolutely not. I'm still not saying that, but he is a good enough quarterback to do what the Falcons need him to do, which is to lead them to a division win and just kind of start to turn this franchise around. Not to mention the fact that you've got now a young quarterback, you know, staring him down, waiting to come in. He's going to have even more of a fire lit under him going into the season. The Falcons are far and away my favorite for the NFC South. Next up is the NFC East, and we have the Giants clearly at four. Um, I don't know what happened to them last season, but they completely collapsed. Yes, Daniel Jones could play better if he is healthy. And yes, he actually did get some help with the addition of Malik Neighbors. But, I mean, obviously you never want to judge how a team's going to do just based on the preseason. But seeing the way that Daniel Jones played in a preseason game was just horrendous. And I don't know if getting more help, both on the offensive line and, you know, in the wide receiver room, is necessarily going to change things for him. I do think he's going to be a better quarterback than he was last year, but it's really easy to get over that bar. I still think the Giants are going to be the worst team in the NFC East this year. Next up, you have the Commanders. Now, if there is any team that is capable of having the kind of season this year that the uh, the Texans had last year, I think it is the Commanders. Do I think they're necessarily going to have that? Well, we'll have to see when I go over the, the rest of the playoff pool. But I do think it's definitely possible. Yes, they don't have quite as many you know weapons as the Texans had, kind of waiting to strike with a better quarterback. But I do have just a great feeling about Jaden Daniels. I have always felt like he was going to end up being the best quarterback in this class. I had daydreams of the Vikings getting him because I really did feel like with the addition of a guy like Jaden Daniels, the Vikings were capable of potentially winning a Super Bowl in the next five years. That that's how much I I was high on Jaden Daniels going into this draft, and I think he's going to do great things for the Washington Commanders. You know, they do have still Terry McLaurin, who is a fantastic wide receiver in the league. 
They still have a pretty decent defense. I still think they're going to be the third best team in the East, but they are they are a team to w- look for to be a sneaky potential team uh, that could end up surprising people this year. Then we have the Cowboys at number two. I think they're two, you know, there's going to be a lot of issues this year. You know, C.D. Lamb did sign his extension. He did, they did make him happy, which is good. I feel like Dak Prescott's going to have a rough year. You know, he is trying to prove himself that he deserves another contract extension. Yes, he has done well in the regular season in the past. I still think he'll have a good enough regular season to make these Cowboys, you know, really play with the Eagles in the NFC East. But I feel like something has to give, and they're going to have another rough, most likely playoff appearance and then loss, and it's going to all fall apart for the Cowboys. There's going to be even more issues. I don't think that Dak Prescott is going to be the QB1 of the Dallas Cowboys next year. I, I truly don't think that that's the case. And I hate to say that, well, I don't know if I hate to say that, but I just don't think that the Cowboys are going to survive this season. And then finally at number one, I hate to say this, it hurts my heart, the Philadelphia Eagles will be number one in the NFC East. I see last year as really more of a fluke year. They kind of had some issues offensively that they weren't able to, to work out. And, you know, sometimes you get into that rut. And I just think they're going to find a way to pull themselves out of that. I think they're going to be a much better team this year. And I am so sad saying this. Um, I, I do think that the you know loss of Jason Kelsey will be huge. Um, but I do definitely think they're going to be able to plug that hole. You know, you know they have A.J. Brown, which I think is a, definitely a top 10, if not a top 5 wide receiver in the league. And Devontae Smith, who is always overlooked and undervalued in the league. And now they added Saquon Barkley as well as having one of the best defenses in the league, I just think that there is going to be a huge resurgence for the Eagles. Last year was kind of the fluke year, and they're going to be right back into the conversation as one of the NFC's best teams, which really sucks to say. Now moving on here to the NFC West, where I have the Cardinals at the number four spot. Now I definitely can see potentially the Cardinals having a a comeback season. I definitely think that people wrote off Kyler Murray way too soon, Do I think that he's just going to come back and be this amazing quarterback again? Not necessarily, but I do think that people saw the way he played the last couple years where he was kind of riddled with injury, and they saw him play like that, and they just decided that he's not a starting caliber quarterback anymore, and I think those things are going to light a fire under him. I think he's going to come back and have a pretty good season. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be uh, a candidate for Rookie of the Year this year. I really do think so. Um, which is not that crazy of a statement to say. He was the best wide receiver taken off the board. But I do think they're going to have a better season than last year. I still think they're going to be fourth, though, in this NFC West. Then we have the Seahawks. Geno Smith has had a weird career because he was completely written off. He came back, and he had that one great season with the Seahawks where they ended up kind of, you know, crapping the bed at the end of the season and they ended up losing in the first round of the playoffs to the 49ers. But I do still think they're capable of stringing some wins together. You know, they, they've got DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett's somehow still kicking it in the league. I just think the defense isn't what it used to be, and I don't think they're going to beat out either of these top two teams in the NFC West, so I have them at the number three spot. Then I have the Rams at number two, Matt Stafford, continues to to defy expectations. Last year, I was so low on him. I thought that the injuries were going to catch up to him and that he wasn't going to be able to put together a good enough season. But last year, he really did prove everyone wrong. He did get the help of Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup on his offense. Um, That only helped him even more, and he was able to lead the Rams to a playoff spot. I think they're going to be a, a good team once again this year but I don't think that they're going to beat out the number one 49ers. The 49ers are going to just continue to be good this year, although I will say, I don't know how hot of a take this is, this will be their last year of being this dominant team because they've been living in this fantasy land where they're like, oh, we have all this unlimited money to spend. Brock Purdy is going to want money this upcoming year. The only reason they've been as successful as they have been the last few years is because they've been paying a, a... quarterback their rookie contract they haven't had to pay this insane money that all these other teams in the nfc 
are having to pay their QBs. And so that's that's going to be the issue next year. But they can worry about that next year because with Brock Purdy still being a, a really good game manager quarterback, with George Kittle still being George Kittle, you've got Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk that, again, I think Ayuk was definitely overpaid as well. And they still have one of the best defenses in the league as well. I mean, I don't think there's going to be any stopping this 49ers team once again. So now let's take a look here at the NFC standings projected for this season. At number one, I do have the 49ers. Again, enjoy it while it lasts, 49ers fans. Then I have the Lions at number two. I just, I have a really good feeling about them this year. I think that, again, Dan Campbell learned a lot of lessons last year, and he's going to get even better as a, as a coach. The Eagles will be number three, but I think it'll be really close between those top three teams. And then I have the Falcons at number four. I think that's pretty consistently, I think everyone in their rankings has whoever wins the NFC South as their number four seed. Then going into the five through seven, I do have the Cowboys at fifth. They will continue to have success in the regular season. And I think that it's going to be an interesting matchup between them and the Falcons uh, and to see if they can actually move on to the second round for the first time in a while. Then you have the Rams at number six, right where they were last year. Again, I don't think they're going to be better or worse this year. I think there's a chance Matthew Stafford falls off, but I don't know if I can confidently say that'll happen this year. So I kept him at number six. And then again, like it was last year, I have the Packers at number seven. I still don't really understand the hype. I think that they're good enough you know, to get to that number seven spot, but I don't really think they have the talent or the roster to be able to win you know, much more than 11 games this year or have any chance at beating out the Lions for the NFC North. The teams I left out here, I had um, four other teams listed for potentially making the playoffs. I had the Saints, which again, I think Derek Carr will have a good season. I just don't think they'll beat out any of these three teams. The Bucks, I kind of I already had my reasons there. The Commanders could be a fun team, but I still don't think that they're going to quite make that point this year. I do see them as a eight, potentially nine win team this year with how well I think Jaden Daniels will do, but I don't think it'll be enough to defeat the Packers, which I think they'll probably have a nine or 10 win season. Um, and then I have the Seahawks also missing the playoffs for the reasons that I mentioned. So anyway, we made it through the full playoff predictions for the NFL Again, make sure you tune into my live stream on Thursday. It's a kickoff stream. We're just going to be chilling, having some fun. I'll be going over some things I'm excited to see this season. But just come in there. Let me know all your questions in the live chat. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, it starts at 6 o'clock Central Time, and it'll end at 7, so about 20 minutes before the actual game starts. So please tune into that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what I predicted, I'm happy to have those discussions in the comment section as well. But thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side.